Okay, so what I want to do today is just cover how you can take your indoor cycling out onto the road. And that, what I basically did with my bike ride today, I knew it was about 18 kilometers, so I was going to split it down into the sections based more on the time as opposed to the uh, distance I was covering. Within that time, you can do it as many times as you like, as many rounds. You can do a specific based on time, so say 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. Um, you can do it on a section that you know, say two miles long, and do that uh, discipline within that distance. So I'll give you an example of that a little later on. So what I started off with first was literally sprinting, standing sprint, 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off, because you can't really do a flat road per se on a bike um, without the resistance because I was using a mountain bike itself. So the standard 10 seconds sprinting, 10 seconds off. After that, it was very much, sometimes I went over, it doesn't really matter, but my sort of counting in my head, but the, certainly the recovery was always there in and around 10 seconds, it was never less. After that, I sort of split it into covering jogging. So jogging being you come off onto your bike, onto your handlebars, and you're sort of holding that position. And I was doing that for 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Again, I was more perhaps using a distance, but I covered that in about six to seven minutes whereas my sprinting was over about an eight minute period. It absolutely, literally flew by. Um, following that bit, is a bit of a cool down. I went literally flat road from one section. Again, it was about seven minutes in total. Flat road, but I was doing press ups as I was going on like this. Literally on the bike, on the road, people thought I was a body bit weird. But first of all, doing that, 10 sets of each time, or 10 reps of each set, and I did probably about a couple hundred Again, it might sound dramatic, but it's very much like an assisted presser because it's just your upper body that you're using. Easy as, over section, so it was about a couple of miles or so that I did this. And like I said, it took about seven minutes, give or take. And it was really effective in terms of working out on my upper body. So every time I sort of did that, I then sort of powered through as a, on the flat road and then started doing my press ups after that. Then I had about a two minute sort of uh, recovery before almost over another section, but it really was split into so, um, times. Glide, so glide, you come off your seat, keep quite low, and then you come back, forward, back. And this one I was doing 10 seconds forward, 10 seconds back, five times. I'd then have a 10 second rest and repeat that section again, all right? And then the final part, with the last sort of 10 minutes or so, I was doing lead leg, so literally, I ranked up my, um, just going back to the jogging, because I've just remembered, if you use your mountain bike, put it up to the top gear, so it means that with the top gear you've got more resistance, and you're moving rather than lower gears, you sort of find yourself bouncing. I found the higher the gear made you sort of hold that core position a lot more effectively, and you got the better results. Like I said, last 10 minutes then was all lead leg, so literally one minute, I was looking at my watch, powering through, really using one more than the other and then after that minute it was noticeably switch the leg so your main one is driving it through minute on minute off minute on minute off and now about 300 meters to go why not fight it out absolute sprinter fest all right 300 meters and that was it 42 minutes in total and jobs are good if you do it let me know but that is how the best way to sort of take your indoor cycling onto the road it goes super fast take care of yourselves and trust me you'll reap the benefits your endurance picks up you'll feel that power kick in when you're doing the sprints and a bit of strength work as well sweet as